My name's Mark. Um, I'm going to show you in this video how to build a polyphonic synthesizer using Max and Beep. Um, and it's going to be having perky expression and also working Max for Live as well. So polyphonic is the key part. So we're just going to start off with the standard snippet for uh, the beat, the beep synthesizer. I mean, obviously, the, usually you would use your own synthesizer and create your own patch. Um, and obviously you can edit this later, but we're just gonna use this one as a starting point. Now what I'm gonna be actually doing is using my uh, sound plane uh, to drive this. Now you can actually drive this with MIDI polyphonically as well, or you can use voice per channel MIDI as well, uh, but I'm just gonna use my sound plane because it's on my desk. Okay, so this part of the patch I've just brought in, actually all it does is parse the OSE messages that are coming from um, sound plane. So I'm gonna move it out of the way up here a bit. And we're just gonna get some messages from it. Coming in, that's okay. Now, what this does is just unpack some message. Now what we want to first of all do is actually to get them into a format that Beep is going to understand. So what we're going to do first is just get the communications going with a monophonic, but and we'll extend it. So the first thing we have to do um, is Beep expects everything to be in um, five volt ranges. So the first thing we're going to do is actually all of the inputs that come from the sound plane are in zero to one. So we actually want those to all be in zero to five. Remember to keep them floating point, uh, and we can duplicate those. So in here we have basically X, Y, and Z, and this last one here is note. Um, so uh, we'll ignore note for a moment. Let me just bring these up here. Okay, so what we'll do first of all is to take this X, Y, and Z parameters into here. And I get the wrong. Sometimes it's okay. And then let's echo this back out into the patch structure. Then the next thing we need to do is to actually convert the note into the format. Now, in um, Beep, what that is, is it's basically it's minus 5 volts to the plus 5 volts. And it uses um, 0 to 120, not... 127. I think that's so that it can actually have middle C as being zero volts. Um, so we'll, we'll go along with that. That's not a problem. Um, so here we basically scale the note. We just take that into the same part. So now what we have is basically all of our things coming through at the right voltage. Now this last part here is actually the touch ID. So I'm going to actually use this to represent the voice that I'm interested in. It, um, when I go polyphonic. So now we have to be a little bit careful here because what I want to make happen is make sure that I always get the voice number before I, um, I actually send out the data for reasons that become more apparent later. But what we can, so we can do that is to just do a trigger and we say we want to trigger uh, the integer and the integer. And then what we're gonna do is we take this voice number here and first thing we're gonna do we're going to actually send it out to, um, we'll just have an integer that we'll store it out first here. Um, and then we're going to then send out the packet data. Now, I'm going to put this over here for, for reasons, again, that will become a bit apparent later. So here we've got basically the note um, followed by um, the pitch and then X, Y, and Z on the sound plane. Let's say you could just use mini messages as well. Now I'm going to unpack these, um, and this is just so that when um, I convert it later, uh, I've I've got everything already ready. So at the moment might not be the case. Okay, so basically I'm now. That lot of stuff is now finished. So we can now just encapsulate that, put that, we'll just call it a T3D pass. 
Okay, so that gives us now, we can see we've got an output of the messages coming in here, and we've got also the voice number, which we'll come back to later. Okay, now, what we want to do is obviously connect this up. Um, and we know that this is already coming into the right voltage. So you remember this was voice number. This is actually the, um, ah, no. So now what I need to do is everything inside beep is also a signal, not a plain value. So we have to convert everything into a signal. So we use the sig object to do that. And again, we're going to need a few of these, so we might as well just duplicate them. So that one is note, that is x, that is y, and that is z. Okay, so now what we can actually do is we can connect this up to the sample simplifier. First CV input is to go into uh, the pitch. Uh, we're going to use we're going to ignore X for the moment, but we're going to use Y um, for the pitch cutoff. So we'll connect that down here. Now Z, what we'll initially do is actually, um, we're going to use this as a gate. So what we're going to do here is just literally look at this and see if it's greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, then We gate the thing. So with a bit of luck, ah, now first things first, what we're going to now do is we're going to actually save this. Before, it's something I do regularly with Max because it has a nasty habit to crash. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to save it directly into um, Ableton's user library, directly into the instrument. Um, and that's because we're actually going to use it later. So we're going to call it just uh, dvoice for demo voice, because this will become a voice. The voice later. Okay, uh, and we'll save that, so that's good. Right, now what we can do is we can see if we've got any, oops, and um, we haven't got anything, and that's, so now that's, we have to have a quick look to why we haven't got anything. Um, the reason we haven't got anything is, we probably have got something actually. For some reason the default no, we haven't got anything. Right, so this gives me an opportunity to show you how to start debugging things, which is always good. So what we've got here inside Beep, we've actually got um, some very useful things. Um, and we're particularly interested in the scope section and we can actually bring out a value parameter. And this will actually let, allow us to see what we've got going on. So now if I press a key here, we can actually see I've got down here one volt, ah, which is the problem. Um, I keep on thinking, <laughs> I keep on getting called out like this. Beep assumes that, I always assumed it's anything over zero volts, but actually beep requires it to be five volts for the gate to be high. So we actually need to multiply this by five, and now we will actually have some sound. Okay, uh, yeah, worth checking down the level meter here. It starts at minus 30 dB for some reason. Anyway, so now we have basically a, a single voice. Um, now, if we actually turn up the CV input here, we can already hear that we've actually got some um, modulation as well, but it's obviously single voice, so that's not much fun. But the point is, we're going to carry on.